Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. I'm joined back by Marcel P, one of my frequent and favorite guests, yours too. Marcel, what's going on, man? Hey, I'm good, man. I just want to say you're my favorite host. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, shucks. So, Thanks. I'm doing well. <laughs> Thanks well, so much for having me. Really excited to be here today. We're going over some hog play, one of my favorite decks. Absolutely. Yeah, dude, I, you know, I couldn't think, like, some uh, tear down the fourth wall for, for you guys out there, but couldn't think of a good video to do today, and I was like, you know what, just play a few matches and record it for the heck of it, and that's exactly what I did, and then it was with this hog deck that you popularized uh, on your YouTube channel as well, I want to talk to you about your YouTube channel as well at some point in this uh, video, but I thought to myself, you know what, why don't I just record the these replays that I already recorded, I happen to be matched against Pompeo in the wild, why don't I just play them back, and then bring Marcel on, who's a really good hog player, you know, got you to number one in the world multiple times, and you can kind of critique my gameplay because I want to up my game, and I'm sure a lot of you guys out there want to do the same. So maybe you can tell me what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong. We are already watching the first replay here, Marcel, but we'll just talk over this one. Mm -hmm. This one was a pretty easy win, uh, quote unquote. And uh, and then after that, I think I have a loss, a draw, and a win. So you can kind of pick me apart there and tell me what I did wrong, what I did right, and maybe what I can change about my game. But before we get all to that, I think it's important for every hog player out there to understand the concept of true blue and, and true red. Can you explain that to the viewers in just, you know, a sentence or two? Yeah, for sure. So um, the term true blue or true red is coined by Orange Juice in one of his YouTube videos. I'll just go over the main idea. So if you've noticed, there are times when your hog, if you play it at the very edge near the river, will jump the bridge, and other times it doesn't. That is this uh, true blue or true red phenomenon, where the game board isn't exactly even every game you play, depending on which side you're on. Um, in friendly battles, the person who requests the game um, is, we, we call it, Orange Juice ended up calling it true blue, because you're the actual blue uh, player. Because, I mean, you end up looking like, it ends up looking like you're blue, no matter who requested the game, right? But basically, yep. in friendly battles, if you request the game, you're true blue. And what that means as a hog player is if you play the hog on the very left edge of your side without any troops or anything, it'll automatically jump the river just for no good reason other than just the game board isn't even. Yeah, and what like that essentially means it is... It will be like an automatic pig push without having to push exactly. it. Exactly. Right. Okay. Exactly. And that makes a big difference, right? Because if you guys know, if, if a building is four tiles from the river, and, and on the other side um, of where you pig push, right? If you pick push the left side and there's four tiles from the river and on the right side, the hog is gonna go for the tower over the building, right? And that's a big, big like difference right there. That's probably like three swings on the tower if you're going to do anything versus like zero, right? And so um, that is how it works in friendly battles is if you request your true blue, that can um, matter for like, if you're playing any tournaments and you know, you guys are all in the clan, and you, you figure out who's requesting, then you need to know, like, am I true blue? And if so, can I take advantage of this? And, and the, the other side is, if you're playing as true red and your opponent's playing hog, every time you place a building, you're gonna wanna place it on your right side, right, if that makes sense. Because he, he's gonna be able to pick push on the left without any troops. And so you better not try and pull the hog an extra tile to the left, because the hog might just jump in and, and not go for your building altogether. Right. Okay, yeah, um, well, that makes that makes sense, and we're hopping into the match against Pompeo here, uh, so why don't we just quickly transition to the match, and tell me oh, what... Oh, yeah, let's go for it. Yeah, so you can see right here, off the bat, I start out pretty aggressive, not something I always do, but I did it here for whatever reason, and basically, you can take it from here and just kind of analyze what's yeah. going on. So right here, it worked out um, where he played cannon right away. And what I would actually would have done here, instead of poisoning the Collector Ash, I would have gone straight for Ice Spirit, um, Skellies, and Hog. He just cycled played right cannon. back to the Hog? Yeah, cycled right back to the Hog. I think poisoning the Collector, while he I mean, has good intention, you don't want to build an Elixir advantage, he just played his cannon. And you could pretty much usually bet that they, they either are going to have another sort of weak counter or no other Hog counter. And I would have just ran for the Hog again. Good because point. They, he played a he played a collector, right? Which is six elixir. There's no way he's going to be able to cycle quicker than your spirit and skellies after playing a six elixir card. Um, that's what I would have gone for there. I don't think it, it cost you too much. It's more, it is more of like the tower is going to be at a higher health uh, in the double elixir, which usually as a hog player, you need to have their tower pretty low going into double elixir. Okay. Um, I'll explain that a little bit. So all right here, you play the hog into cannon. It's fine because, um, I mean, there wasn't really much else you could do. He has cannon rotation, but I'm fine with that. 
I think mm -hmm. um, at this point, if he tries to pump up, maybe you could go again for another uh, hog because he did just play Cannon and Electro Wizard, two really, really good hog counters. His only other card right now is Minions, right? And so right here, I would be looking to... Um, it's a little awkward because you're stuck right now with the Musketeer. Yeah. You can't really get through. You can't really get through your cycle, right? Yeah. Um, so this is like a, so a lot what of... what's happening here. Yeah. I ended up so throwing you... away a few Elixir there, for sure. Yeah, because he sort of had to to get to the Hog. And you don't end, end up even playing the Hog. At this point, he's I, back to Cannon. Yeah, exactly. I, I knew he was back to Cannon at that point, so I just decided to poison the tower, take out the minions, and that was pretty good. But then he pumps on the other side, and things kind of break down for me around here. I, I think that that play right there, where you poison the tower and didn't Hog, actually is maybe what costs you... I haven't seen the result of the game yet, but what, ends up, what ended up happening was he had his pump in a rotation where you couldn't poison it, and then he got his cannon into your hog, right? If you talk about fixing your cycle to get your cards, you know, against your opponent's cards, Pompeo like had the perfect rotation right there. He he pumped, no poison, you hog, he had cannon. And I think that ended up sort of working out because you you ended up poisoning the, the minions while he hadn't well he had pump as his next card, right? If that makes sense. Yeah, um, okay. So I think that really cost you there. It seems like twice now in this match I've just I should have played the hog and I didn't. Is that yeah, like, definitely. Yeah. I think there, it's, it, I mean, oftentimes my tip usually ends up being like, don't play the hog too aggressively. But in this video, from what I'm seeing, you, with hog, it, it's subtle. You, there are definitely times where you'll get punished by playing the hog at the wrong time, but it's the same for the exact opposite. If you don't play the hog when you should, you lose a really critical opportunity. And I think otherwise, if you had played the hog aggressively when you should have, Ash, I think you would have had this tower down the like spell cyclable range, right? At okay. this point in the game, um, so right here, I mean, it's unfortunate that you, you're like one tile off of the Musketeer, and this yeah. is this game, that's, that's probably what costs you. Yeah, um, and, yeah. And then at this point, the I, I think it's going to be a tie at this point, and then he gets me at the very last second again with this combo oh, here, geez. with the freeze. But, Your cannon placements are, are, are really on point, but um, at this point, let's see, he can probably just freeze. Your, all right, so he does right freeze. Right here, yeah. Oh, this is not enough, I guess. Yeah, oh, I knew, yeah. Bad. That zap was big. I knew I had to delay the Musketeer because I knew the freeze was coming, but then he had the zap and it was a beautiful freeze there. Well, a beautiful zap, I should say, at the end, and he got me. So I think that what I wasn't understanding there, what you kind of pointed out was just when to attack, you know, uh, and when not to. It seemed like, you know, I guess that's something that I kind of struggle with in my hog game is that I don't... Uh, oh, this is when I shared the replay with the clan. <laughs> don't mind that. Uh... <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I think that's something that I struggle with is, you know, when I know they're holding their best counter to my hog, like, sometimes I'm reluctant to throw the hog against it, and I kind of miss a hog play there. But it sounds like <laughs> you're saying that even when they, even when I know they have the cannon or whatever, it's still valuable to play the hog into it if that's what the situation calls for. Yes, yes and no. So I think um, that... So basically, my, my the two conditions I look at when playing the hog are number one, can they turn their defense into a counter push? Ideally, the answer is no. And the second is, um, are they going to be able to counter my hog with a non-hog counter, like a skeleton army or a minion horde? And I'm not going to have the appropriate response, right? Um, so uh, just to go a little bit, talk a little bit here about like what I mean by that. So if your opponent uh, has a hog counter in hand, like a cannon or a bowler, say. Mm -hmm but they don't have their win condition close uh, close by. Maybe they don't have their giant, right? Or, okay. or maybe they have hog. Or the so balloon totally... in Pompeo's case. Yeah, or the balloon, yeah. yes. I'm very happy with throwing hog, right? Especially in single single elixir. The reason is, your my hog deck's almost always going to be cheaper than any other deck out there. And if I know that I can force out their counter, and they can't really get an offense off of it, right? Because okay. they can't counter push, what I said. Then I'm going to do that, and then cycle back to hog, and then they're not going to have their counter in hand. And I'm going to punish them and get serious damage on the on the next push, right? Okay. Um, that's the okay. first point about them not having, uh, not being able to counter push. The second point is if they have a non-hog counter, which which can sort of shut them down, like a skeleton army, which I wouldn't consider a hog counter because you could basically, you know, turn the the skeleton army into a sea of elixir if you just throw a zap or a log on it. Yeah. Um, you you need to know that they have it in hand. That's the only way it's gonna work. Is, unless you have zap, which zap I guess you can play reactively. But you need to know 
what their um, other defense is besides the um, their main hog counter, right? Okay. Um, yeah, if, if that makes sense. It does. It does. That's it's good advice. Uh, moving on to the next match here, I, I think I made a few misplays in this in this match, and I really wanted to share this one. I'm happy that I kind of had this. It ends up in a draw, not to ruin it for you guys. But the thing is, is I, I kind of struggle with this deck against Graveyard. I mean, I have Poison, Musketeer, Log, Ice Golem, like some answers, even Skeleton and, and Ice Spirit, the cycle cards. But mm -hmm. I, especially if I use this deck in like challenges, I find that I really kind of struggle against Graveyard. So maybe you can tell me where I went wrong here. And maybe I'm too aggressive on the Poison. Every time he drops Archers, I tend to drop Poison, uh, just try to get some more damage on the tower because I'm having difficulties against this guy getting my Hog through against the Inferno Tower. Yeah, so I think the I mean the deck on its own, just looking at the cards in it, are are definitely it's a, definitely a card a, a deck that's not that strong against graveyard. I think your version is a little bit stronger because you have poison compared mm -hmm. to fireball and poison now because it one ticks the skeleton yeah. is a lot better against graveyard. The tips I have, um, depending on what kind of graveyard deck they have, uh, if it's not a giant graveyard deck uh, or golem graveyard, cannon actually does work against the uh, the graveyard. It'll tank a good amount. It'll it'll shoot a lot. That's one thing I see people not using when, when in fact, it is a really good card against Graveyard. Um, the other thing here, looking at his deck, I mean, he all his his defenses against Hog are pretty good as well. He has Inferno Tower, which I, otherwise I would say fine, you can outcycle it. But he also has Electro Wizard, which is yeah. also pretty darn good against Hog, right? So um, the, the two points I, I want to make are uh, Cannon is great against. Your graveyard and the other thing is skeletons don't don't um, underestimate how good skeletons on ladder are no one really has level five graveyard and mm -hmm. if you have max level skeletons or i mean whether it's max or not if you have skeletons that are higher level than your opponents graveyard, the, yeah whatever which is yeah. often yeah yeah which is often the case because it's a common versus a legendary card mm -hmm. yeah use them like and even cycle to skeletons again because they'll take two shots from each graveyard skeleton but they'll one shot the skeleton so it's basically like you have eight skeletons Okay. Uh, you drop yeah. The four. You know Especially that does after make the buff now too. That does make sense. So when you see the opponent coming at you and you know it's going to be a graveyard, are you trying to? If you were playing the deck that I'm playing, are you? Tr is mm -hmm. your number one counter going to be poison, or is it going to be just trying to rely on maybe like musketeer, ice golem, and skeletons or something like that, so you can keep the musketeer alive? On offense. Yeah, looking at the deck that you have, I would say uh, the, deck, the deck that he had, I would have said that um, it is okay that you're poisoning the archers. As you can see, you're still able to defend because he didn't have a big tank against like a giant graveyard deck. I would almost always save the poison because there's no way you're gonna shred through the giant quick enough yep. such that you're able to then go around and defend the skeletons. Okay, um, gotcha. So yeah, so th yeah, that, that'll be my my tip right there. Okay, and, and this is the last match I think that I record. Yeah, it is. Uh, and this was actually a win, but you can still try to, you know, pick apart whatever you think. I uh, When you play a, a deck like this, a hog deck, or, or a, any kind of a mm -hmm. hog cycle deck, do you sometimes, you saw I just did it there, but do you sometimes just play the Musketeer and the Ice Golem, or do you just let the, the, the Musketeer, after a successful defense, do you let the Musketeer just go in the lane solo and try to get a shot off or whatever, or force the opponent to counter? Yeah, it really, really depends on what card you, you know they're going to have in cycle. Um, okay. If I don't know what card they have, then I'm okay. I usually will just leave the Musketeer because oftentimes if, if they have like a Knight or if they have minions, they could basically turn your um, two cost Ice Golem into zero value, right? If their only defenses are Ice Wizard, for example, or Princess, then I would definitely want to go with the um, Ice Golem in front of the Musketeer, right? Um, okay. Basically, if they can drop a melee unit that will kill the musketeer, and that they have that in cycle, I would I would avoid the the ice golem okay. because they you, it's basically wasting two elixir, right? Okay, um, yeah, that's smart. So I think he hadn't seen that he had minion horde yet, so it wasn't quite obvious. But yeah, yeah. So yeah, this is I kind of get lucky here, not lucky, but you know, luckily luckily enough, I'm able to cycle to stop the elite barbarians from getting too much damage onto my tower there, but. Uh, other than that, like, you can see, now that I'm watching it back myself, and obviously this is why people always recommend watching back your matches, but you can just see, <laughs> I play Poison offensively a lot in this deck, like, I'm noticing, with the exception of right now against that minion horde, but I, mm -hmm. I guess, I guess I'm, I'm a little bit on the aggressive side with it, is that something that you think is okay besides, you know, the 
the circumstance that I that I sh did before with the uh, with the archers last match. I think it's okay. Like I actually like I used it against a, a, an ice wizard. You know. Yeah, I think that's that's actually fine, especially in double elixir. Yeah. Like you end up getting most of your damage. I want to say with um with your spells really, because you're not really gonna be able to outcycle their hog counter in double elixir, right? Um, yeah. So I think that's fine. I, I think the the main thing is making sure. I mean. You have to know what cards they have. They have like three musketeers, and obviously you want to be saving your poison, right? But yeah, yeah. His the only punish card he had for your poison was a uh, minion horde. But you have musketeer and a, a, a ton of other like ice golem, ice spirit. So you you ended up being just fine, clearly. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah. I would say it is fine. What, you did what about like you kind of brought up a great point there? And what what about playing a hog cycle deck in the in the first minute ver, or excuse me the regular elixir time versus double elixir time? Like you said, you kind of just touched on it. Is that people can get to their counter so much faster? So is there anything you'd recommend to kind of shift your play in the last minute? Or oh, the last definitely. two minutes yeah, or talk, whatever. I talked about this a bit in my uh, video, but yeah, definitely. Yeah. So the main thing, my like sort of overview of what, how a hog deck wins is in single elixir, you make negative trades. That's right, negative trades in offense to force the, the rotation in your favor. You make positive trades on defense with your skeletons and ice spirit because you have really, really good cheap defensive cards. So mm -hmm. I'll talk over that again. I'll stress. So you make negative trades in offense to force out their hog counter such that you can outcycle it. And then their counter comes down, right? They're not able to support it because you, you played your hog when they don't have their win condition. And then you defend with skeletons. You defend their bowler with skeletons and ice spirit, for example. And then you throw another hog and, and you get a ton of damage. This is a single elixir because you can outcycle their hog counter. Okay. And then in double elixir, and then you get their tower down to around a quarter health, ideally. A third to a quarter health. And double elixir, oftentimes, especially if they have two hog counters, you just spell cycle. That's, it really turns into that. Oftentimes, uh, I think a lot of hog players really miss that. The, the main okay. thing in double elixir is you get their tower down to a third health. If you don't have their tower down to a third or a quarter health in double elixir, and they have two hog counters, you pretty much lost the game at that point, unless your opponent makes a mistake. Okay. So you really have to get all your damage in single elixir by outcycling your opponent's um, counters, and then um, your spell cycle away with as, as much value as you can get with your poisons and fireballs or what have you on the tower. Okay, that's that's great advice there, because you know, I'll be honest with you, I never looked at it that way. So I think it's really enlightening that you that you share it that way. I kind of just assumed that you know when you get to double elixir, it just requires more predictive plays, and that's that. You know, as opposed to thinking of it, I really like the the idea of kind of breaking it down to your goal is the the negative elixir trades on offense, the positive elixir trades on defense. Get the tower down to spell cycle, meaning one, hopefully, or two, or even three poisons in the last minute or two, and then that mm -hmm. that that's a great game plan. I feel like. So kudos. yeah, for, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> I hope, I hope that can help you guys if you try it out. I think a lot of people do miss the, the point. They end up throwing a lot of hogs, which get zero value in double elixir. And if you think uh -huh. about it, um, your a fireball is one hog swing, right? If you're trying to get one hog swing out of your hog. And the, your opponent's basically going to get a, their, their counter card is just going to live with full health. You might as well just throw the fireball at whatever card they have next to the tower. Sure. And count that as your hog swing, right? Every yeah. Time. Yeah. Sure. Uh, well, well, great advice, man. If you could, if you could pick apart any like flaws in my game in general, was there anything glaring that stuck out at you, or was it just little things here and there? I think I, I, there definitely weren't any like huge, huge mistakes for sure. Um, I think. I think it's just really making sure you know like what um, what rotation they have. Like for example, in the first game, the game against Pompey, you used the poison when clearly he had um, pump as his next card. I think mm -hmm. it, I mean it, it's definitely, there are definitely subtle things where you have to really be paying attention. I, I definitely mm -hmm. make those mistakes in some of my games as well. But when, when I'm focusing, I try to really pay attention to make sure if you know what's in their hand. Which I feel like you wouldn't you would if you knew that he had pump in hand, you probably wouldn't have poisoned the musket the the minions right there. You had a musketeer, I believe. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to a really specific um, scenario, but I think these are sort of the things most players that know what they're doing, but sort of just slip up here and there. It uh -huh. really is these little scenarios that you have to pay attention to. Know what's in your opponent's hand and just don't sort of tilt the rotation such that it's in your opponent's favor. Okay, specifically about a, you know, just to touch again on that Pompeo match, but I just as a general question, if the opponent does in, in a match, let's say a, uh, I don't know, Let's say they're playing 
mm, any kind of a beatdown deck or, or anything, if the opponent does drop an elixir pump behind their opposite tower that you're going for, see, I always prioritize getting rid of that pump like by any means necessary because I know I can't defend against a super huge push. Are, do you have the same philosophy? But it, it sounds like sometimes you advocate instead of going aggressively after the pump, just aggressively cycle back to Hog instead. Like, how do you tell those two scenarios yeah. apart? Yeah, there's, it definitely depends on... You're right. There are definitely times where I would recommend just taking out the pump versus going for the Hog. And what, really, uh, what it really depends on is what your opponent has uh, in his hand at the time. If he doesn't have a Hog counter in hand, Let's say he has like a knight and musketeer or something like that, which aren't really hog counters. I would mm -hmm. always go for the hog push because your opponent is basically going to have to overspend on defense, right? If you think okay. about it, if he doesn't have a hog counter, the only way he's going to defend is he overspends, right? Is mm -hmm. one, or maybe he doesn't defend. In which case, you turn your four elixir hog into huge damage. So you've made a very, very, very positive damage trade, and at that point, if at that point, you would have basically gotten the entire tower down, or you have it down at spell cycle range if he doesn't defend, right? So the two scenarios, again, if he doesn't have hog counter in hand and he pumps, I go for the hog, and if he either overcommits on defense, you'll still get one hog swing or two, but he loses his advantage, right? He played knight and musketeer, sure. or something mm -hmm. weird like that, that isn't really a hog counter. Or he doesn't really counter your hog, plays like one knight, you get three hog swings, and basically I would consider that a very positive trade on your end, in terms of elixir efficiency into damage which okay. are both worth it, right? If your opponent has a hog counter, then yes, poison the collector because you get back the one elixir um, mm -hmm. instead of him getting a two elixir advantage from the pump. But th that's basically my, my thinking on that. And oftentimes, you know, it's a good point too because oftentimes the most opportune time to drop that elixir pump, at, looking at it from your opponent's vantage point, is after they just defended against a hog push. So oftentimes, right. they probably don't have that counter in their hand. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So if you then are able to cycle quickly, then yeah. we'll go for cool. it. Cool, for sure. cool. Uh, well, thanks so much for coming on again, man. Can you tell us a little bit? Your channel's like blowing up, and it's rightfully so because it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, tons of gameplay of you pushing to number one in the global leaderboards, and in a lot of like in depth uh, philosophy, kind of like the video we did today, only just you sharing your expert thoughts on decks like this and, and kind of getting deeper next level. So I recommend all you guys go subscribe to Marcel. I'll include the link in the description marcel anything on the horizon on the youtube channel that we should know about oh uh, yeah so i'm looking to slowly make a couple more videos about um more like i wouldn't say free to play but sort of levels uh, card levels or tower levels that are more uh that, that the viewers can relate to more i'm showing a lot of sort of a uh, top of the ladder game yeah. right now but i'm looking to at least make a couple of videos uh, of me playing an account or bringing people on that can talk about playing an account that's on the, I don't know, like 2,000 to 3,000, maybe nice. like mid 3,000 trophy range and see what kind of, uh, what kind of um, response I get from the viewers. If you guys did enjoy um, this video here, really would appreciate if you guys check out my channel uh, or, or subscribe even. I do have a lot of video. I think I have like maybe 10 or 11 videos right now still starting yeah, coming out. Coming along nicely. I mean, yeah. yeah, huge, huge thanks to everyone that's been supporting me. If, if you, I mean, if you guys have watched any of uh, Clash with Ashes videos, he's been sort of a huge, huge help to me for sure. Probably the biggest support I've gotten. So definitely huge thanks to you, man. Um, really, really appreciate it. Super grateful that you Ah, shucks, man. You would have got there either way. YouTube. You would have got there either way, but thank you. And uh, and guys, yeah, I'll link uh, Marcel's latest video and his channel. You can subscribe from there uh, in the description below. And uh, Marcel, thanks again, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Thanks again for having me on. And uh, we'll definitely look forward to coming back, hopefully sometime soon. Of course. Hopefully so, man. Take it easy. Catch you later. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Another huge shout out to my YouTube partner, Bren Chong. Uh, make sure you follow him on social media. It's all linked in the description below for giveaways, tournaments, and more fun Clash Royale content. So guys, thanks so much for watching. And as always, take care, guys.